been in this business 22 years this March, thank God. I have never seen such hatred directed at a single man as I see against Donald Trump. No one is perfect. I see more hatred on a daily basis coming not only from our enemies, but from newspaper people in this country who say things about Trump that they wouldn't even dare say about people who murder, kidnap, rape, torture, sell young girls into slavery. The Daily News was the worst. I read it over the weekend. I've never seen anything like it. And so I want to talk about that on the Savage Nation with the man himself who's being attacked. Donald Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. Donald, how do you take such abuse? It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. The Daily News, it's owned by a lightweight named Mort Zuckerman. He's, uh, you know, just one of these guys doesn't know what the hell he's doing. The paper is going to close soon. But the Daily News is run by Zuckerman. I thought he had Alzheimer's disease. Well, he's got a problem. And, and uh, to be honest, I mean, I hear it's closing very soon. But, you know, well, Donna, let, let me lay, let, lay my cards on the table. From the beginning, I have supported you, and I still do. But with this relentless assault, assault on you from every quarter I can imagine, and think, from people I could never imagine saying these things, <clears throat> some are losing faith in you because of the, these assaults. I'd like to clear the air today with a few questions. The number one issue for me and for many of them is the foreign worker program or H-1B visas. On the last debate you implied you wanted to expand this program. The next day your campaign released a statement saying that that wasn't the case. Where do you actually stand on H-1B visas, Mr. Trump? To keep it down to a minimum, we don't want to have it. Like we right now, we're our job, you know, our job situation is a disaster. When they asked me that question, it was mixed up. It was a mixed up question and, you know, it was improperly asked. But uh, our job situation in this country is an absolute a disaster because you know the five percent rate they talk about is actually probably twenty five percent. The real number, unemployment number, is probably twenty five percent. We have to get jobs for our people first, and that's just not what's happening. You know that better than almost anybody. But but Donna, listen, I, in Silicon Valley, you got guys like Facebook's founder who are hiring. He's hiring H one B visa guys from India for twenty bucks an hour. He's firing American IT workers who are making only fifty five an hour. It's astounding. I had a headhunter call me who say that's outrageous. He's only doing it for profits. <laughs> there are plenty of American workers who could do the jobs. So why would you expand the H-1B visa program? This example is Disney, what they're doing. They're having people train these people, and after they're trained, they get fired. No, I know that. So I'm saying if you become president, which I hope you do, would you tell the American people that you're going to knock out the H-1B visas for a while and let Americans train for the jobs? We have to get our people working first, Michael. Before we can do anything, we have to get our people working. But, you know, Disney went out. You saw what happened with Disney. They had people training these people after they were fully trained. The people that were doing the training were fired. No, I know that. That's why I'm asking you the question. All right, let's put that aside. During an interview on CBS, you talked about having to fight ISIS, fighting fire with fire. And I happen to agree with you, by the way, because they're not fighting by the Geneva Convention rules. Can you clarify your position on having American soldiers torture them in order to get information out of them? Where do you really stand on that? Well, that's clear. That was always clear. That was never a change. Uh, look, the question was asked to Ted Cruz, and he didn't want to get involved in it because he thought that waterboarding is so terrible. Then they looked over to me, and I said, absolutely, I want waterboarding. I absolutely want it. Now I'm talking about within the laws, but I want to expand the laws to include waterboarding and to include worse than waterboarding because... What we're doing is we're fighting people that have no rules and regulations, and we're putting all these rules and regulations on, whether it's torture or whatever you want to call it, and how are you going to compete with an enemy where they have no rules and regulations, and yet we put all these restrictions on? So I said, and I got a tremendous ovation when I said it, I said that as far as I'm concerned, waterboarding is fine, and frankly, I'd like to expand it. Now, you have laws. But they don't have laws. You know, we have laws, Michael. They don't have laws. No, I agree. It's like going into a boxing ring and one guy's following all the rules of boxing. No low blows, no hitting behind the belt. The other guy is kicking him in the you-know-whats, giving him rabbit punches, hitting him in the neck. How can he win that fight? The guy's allowed to walk in with a machine gun. We're allowed to walk in with nice, soft uh, gloves. So that's what we're doing. All right, so you're saying take the gloves off and just kill him, and that's the end of it. Otherwise, they're liable to kill us. You know, I've said this before, Donald. I was banned from Britain for asking a rhetorical question, which was, what do you, th what would you rather do if a group of radical Muslims got their hands on a dirty bomb and you had the opportunity to kill them before they killed you? What would you do? They said, I said kill 100 million Muslims. I never said that. 
So I'm used to this kind of slam, Donald. Believe me, I know what they do. No, it's terrible. They'll take what you say and they'll totally change it. No, what I say is we have to widen our, you know, hey, look, the concept that we have laws and they don't, number one, is no good. Okay, it's not a good situation. But we live within the laws. We have to widen the laws so we can do things to do what we have to do. Michael, it is so ridiculous what we're doing in this country. Then you wonder why we can't beat ISIS. A new poll came out that said 61% of Americans oppose immigration. It's an astounding figure. It explains your popularity. That's why the Republican establishment is going berserk. That's why Mexico and Japan and South Korea, who are robbing us blind, have attacked you viciously. And so I, I understand why they're attacking you, because they're afraid of you. You're actually trying to make America make money. They can't have that since they're robbing us blind. The crooks don't want to stop robbing us. Now, why are, you, why are the Republicans attacking you more viciously than Hillary? How come she gets off scot-free with her scandals? How come we haven't heard a thing about Obama's scandals? What kind of country am I living in, Donald? It's an amazing. I've never seen anything like what's going on, Michael, to be honest with you. I've never seen. But the polls are very good, and we seem to be doing very well. We're, you know where I am now? I'm at Mississippi right now. And tomorrow we have Mississippi, and we have also a very big one tomorrow is Michigan. Right. And there's nobody been better about cars than me. I'm going to bring the automobile industry back from Mexico to all these places that are taking our business. So I'm going to be bringing it back. So I think nobody's been better to Michigan than me. And now right. I'm, I'm, I have a huge following on WJR in Detroit, Michigan, and all the other states. Before you go, Donald, you're a businessman. People don't understand business. Socialists like Bernie Sanders, who never ran a corned beef stand, don't understand that business means some businesses succeed and some fail. So what they do, like the creeps at the Daily News, they, they come up with some of your ventures that didn't work, and they try to make it look like you're a crook or a bad businessman. What they don't understand is that business is a gamble. Some businesses work, some fail. Isn't that true? But my businesses really work, and the ones that they have these little things. Number one, they're still in business. I don't even know what they mean. They talk about a water company. They talk about these different things. I still have them. Uh, but my businesses work. I never even saw the thing on the Daily News. I mean, the good news, I guess not a lot of people read the Daily News, but my businesses work. Hey, Michael, I made billions and billions and billions of dollars. I started off with very, very little, and I made billions and billions of dollars. And well, that's something that, said, something that the college class of spoiled inheritance cases don't understand. Guys who say you inherited the money from your father, I happen to know from having read everything I could about you and your great father, was he didn't give you a lot of money. He gave you an initial seed loan, which you paid back. Your father was a great man, yet they even smeared him. Here's a man who built apartment houses all over middle-class Brooklyn and Queens, and they made him into a bad guy for doing it. So what more can you expect from these people? They've never built a thing in their life, Donald. No, they're bad people, Michael, and they're liars. They're real liars, and it's a shame. It's a shame they can get away with it. But Now, I saw something positive, Donald. Trudeau, the left-winger in, in, in Canada, said, I'll work with Trump if he wins. He's smarter than I thought. He senses you just might become president. Well, we're doing well. I mean, despite all this bad press, I have to tell you, the press is brutal. You look at what the New York Times says and all these people, and it's absolutely, and so, it's, it's such lies. They, what are, I mean, what they say is just incredible. And then when you call them to have it corrected, they agree with you, and then they say, but we're not correcting it. Yeah, oh, I've seen yeah. that my whole life. Look, he, this guy Trudeau, he's very smart. He, he's saying, look, I'm not an American, I'm a Canadian. He doesn't know who's going to win, but he said, I can work with Donald Trump if he wins. So he, he smells which way the wind is blowing. And then he says about Americans who may want to move to Canada, if you become president, he's offering them Cape Breton and Nova Scotia. You know what? I'd pay one-way fares for all of the liberals on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I'd raise all the money I could to give them one-way tickets to Cape Breton. Would you join me in that, Donald? That's funny. Well, you know, it's interesting. I built many units on the West Side, that whole city, from 72nd Street to 59th Street. They don't talk about that, by the way. They only talk about a water, or they talk about something else, which, by the way, I still have. You know, these companies that they said didn't, they're little companies. They're all little companies, but they're, most of them are doing very well. Yes, but the critics are those who never ran a business or tried business. So even if the companies aren't making money, the fact is that some win and some lose, some win big, some lose big, some win small and some lose small. That is capitalism. Last business, we touched that. How about the health care? You seem to be leaning to more of a government-style control of health care. Would you, would you grant uh, health care to illegal aliens in this country? No, I wouldn't. And frankly, I'm not. I, what I want to do is private. I want to bring, uh, you know, we want to knock out the lines. We want to do a lot of different things, Michael, so that 
we can have competitive private health care, and that's going to take care of most of it. Now, you'll have some people at the very, the very bottom that just don't have money, and we go through Medicare, Medicaid, we go through some kind of a formula because we don't want people dying in the middle of the streets. But Donna, listen, I've said this, and people don't understand it. It doesn't matter. If you gave them government-subsidized health care, it, it would cost us less than what it's costing us now with them having 100% care in any hospital in America. I've gone in the ER room for problems of my own in California. You see them around the clock. They come in with a sniffle the next day with a broken hand, a broken arm. They get gold-plated health care. There are no limits on what they get, Donald. We'd be better off giving them some kind of program that was limited. Do you know that? Right. What we have now is the worst, Michael. It's the worst of all, and it's, it's going to die of its own volition, but we're going to terminate it. If I win, we terminate it, we replace it with really good stuff that's going to cost a lot less money. What about Social Security, Donald Trump? Try and save it, Michael. We've got to save it. We Look... These people have been paying in for years. Now, we're losing our jobs. We're losing our money. Everything's leaving the country. You look at, hey, I'm in Mississippi now. They're complaining they're losing so many jobs. I was in Michigan a couple of days ago. They're complaining they're losing so many jobs to Mexico and to other places. We're going to bring back our jobs. We're going to make our country rich again, and we're going to be able to save Social Security. Donald, before you go, I just want to repeat what I said here for two hours. Because of the vicious attacks upon you, you, a man is more often, a man is more clearly defined by his enemies than by his friends. And by that definition, you're in great company. Some of the sickest, most radical left-wing vermin in this country and abroad are ripping you to shreds. You know what? God bless you, because I don't like them very much. Right, I understand. I understand. It's very All right, Donald. I wish you luck tomorrow in Michigan, Mississippi, Idaho, and Hawaii. And I hope you can come back to the Savage Nation. And you don't forget me when you become president. I will never forget you, Michael. You've been my friend, and I appreciate it. You've been so loyal and so great, and I appreciate it, Michael. Well, I hope you didn't mind some of the tough questions because people have been saying you got to ask them this. No, well, thank you. I love those questions. I mean, <laughs> I, and I knew that you would, and I also knew that you wouldn't be afraid to answer them because you're telling the truth. Okay, that's the thing that they hate the most, Donald. I know you're really afraid of Mitt Romney. Tell us about that wimp. Where's that coming from? The guy is the worst candidate probably in the history of presidential politics. He came out of nowhere. I mean, he just came out of nowhere. This guy disappeared four years ago. He disappeared. He didn't run. He should have beaten Obama easily. And now he gets up and quit. He should have used the same. He should have used the same energy to go against Obama. Maybe. Thank you. Right. If he would, if he used one tenth of the viciousness against you against Obama, he would have destroyed him in those three debates. He took a fall for the Republican Party because he beat him in the first debate, and then they told him to take a fall in number two and three, and the rest is history. Donald Trump, I won't keep you any longer. Thank you for being on the Savage Nation. I'll be right back, everybody. Joy.